Barking is a huge problem. Typing barking is ruining my life into a Google search bar reveals over 20 million results. This indicates that a lot of people are suffering. This is a problem we can no longer ignore. We need to talk about this. There is a website called BarkingDogs.net, which is very informative. I will link you to it in the description. This website goes into great detail and explains many of the negative and sometimes devastating impacts of chronic exposure to barking dogs and how exactly this exposure affects our health. For dog lovers who think I am biased, the author of this website is totally pro-dog, so you cannot say the information is biased. To quote from the website, when the federal government wanted to push the Branch Davidians to the breaking point in the siege at Waco, they bombarded them with sound, including the sounds of animals in distress. When the U.S. military wanted to drive Manuel Noriega from his sanctuary in Panama, they used the same strategy because they knew that chronic noise is an intolerable irritant that drives people frantic. The owners of barking dogs will sometimes tell you that the fact that you are bothered by the sound means that you have some deep psychological problem, but it is not so. It is normal and natural for people to be irritated and upset as a result of exposure to sound, especially loud, sharp sounds that erupt suddenly and without warning. When chronic noise rings through your home as it does with a barking dog, it is even more upsetting than it would be if the same noise occurred in a different setting. Because your home is your place of refuge, it's where you go to get away from the relentless hammering of the outside world. If you cannot find refuge in your own home, then where are you to go? If a charismatic personality enters the room, he can single-handedly liven up the place and shift everyone into a positive mood. On the other hand, just one person who is angry or desperate or frantic can drag everyone's mood down and spoil the party. That's the nature of people. We are social animals. Most normal, healthy people have a strong tendency to absorb the mood of those around them. Now think about the message a dog is sending when he barks. Either he is angrily shouting out threats to do bodily injury, or screaming out that he's lonely and desperate, or shouting out a frantic alarm. The function of those sounds is to agitate the listener, to force you to pay attention and make it difficult for you to focus on anything else. Of course, there's also the sound of a happy canine at play. But when the next door neighbor's dog is barking all day, that's not the bark you are listening to. What you are hearing is the dog expressing rage, sorrow, desperation, or a frantic state of mind. It is just human nature for us to absorb those feelings and be drawn into the dog's chaotic emotional state." End quote. Now, as a society, we recognize that barking is a problem. The numerous anti-barking devices and methods currently out on the market testify to this. These include electronic collars, citronella collars, sound emitting collars, remote sound emitters, muzzles, debarking surgery, and medication all great for the $70 billion per year pet industry. Not that great for us, because although we recognize barking as a problem, little is actually being done about it in practice, and it continues to ruin our health, relationships, and quality of life. Most dog owners underestimate the problem. They think the sound of barking dogs is natural, just as natural as the sound of birds chirping, but it is not. Dogs are not part of nature. Dogs were genetically engineered by humans through selective breeding. Nature would never have created animals to bark the way dogs do. Wolves and dogs diverged from an extinct wolf species some 15,000 to 40,000 years ago. But while dogs bark, adult wolves do not. Only wolf cubs and juveniles will sometimes bark. The reason wolves don't bark is that they know that if danger is present, the best thing to do is to be as quiet as possible staying hidden until the threat has passed. Dogs, on the other hand, deal with threats in the opposite way, barking at them until they go away. And they feel threatened by things that are not even threats, like squirrels, friendly visitors, or small children playing on the street, minding their own business. Researchers believe dogs learned this behavior from being in close relationship with humans over thousands of years. Humans are very vocal creatures, and through the process of domestication, dogs learn that we are not so great at picking up their nonverbal cues. To make sure that their owners understood what they were trying to communicate, over time our dogs learn to bark. Quoting from a BarkPost.com article, Researchers believe that our dogs' barking behaviors are due to years of selective breeding. We prefer dogs that are gentle and friendly, 
and as a result over the years have bred these juvenile characteristics into our dogs. And as I'm sure you've guessed, barking is just a side effect of those juvenile behaviors, end quote. Juvenile and friendly, more like dumb and annoying. Why is exposure to chronic barking so profoundly debilitating? Barking is noise pollution. Noise pollution is defined as harmful or annoying levels of noise. Millions of people living next door to barking dogs are telling us that the barking is very annoying and very damaging to them. You can read their stories online. People who have never suffered through extensive exposure to chronic barking often find it difficult to understand why it should be such an incredibly upsetting, debilitating ordeal. Quoting from BarkingDogs.net again, When you hear the sound of a barking dog, it is the sound of a threat or of distress, or it's the sound of an alarm. This triggers the autonomic nervous system to go into a state of arousal. When your brain sends electrical impulses along your nerves telling the connected organs to speed up, the pupils of your eyes will open wider, your heart will begin beating faster, and your breathing will increase as your lungs begin to work harder. Also, the smooth muscles of your vascular system will react in a way that reduces the blood flow to your hands and feet and channels more blood deep into your body to the major organs. The more things speed up, the greater the sense of tension we feel. When you feel emotionally upset in an excited, high-energy sort of way, you are in a state of autonomic speed-up. If your brain sends electrical impulses along the neural pathway telling the connected organs to slow down, your pupils return to normal size and your heart rate and breathing slow. At the same time, the smooth muscles of your vascular system channel more blood into your hands and feet and less to the major organs. The more things slow down, the more relaxed we feel. The organs of the body that are beyond our conscious control, like those listed above, together with the nerve cells that connect them, are known as the autonomic nervous system, or the ANS. When you hear the sharp, jarring sound of a barking dog, it gives you a start. Physically, you feel yourself give a little jump, and you experience a sudden sense of tension. That feeling is the autonomic nervous system speeding up the inner workings of your body. As the barking continues on, the neurons continue firing and you become increasingly tense. While the ANS makes us feel tense, it is the endocrine or hormonal system and the chemicals that are released in our bodies that make us feel anxious when we are in close proximity to a barking dog. The hormonal system is regulated by a primitive part of the human brain that responds instantly to the primitive threats and messages of desperation that are implicit in the voice of a chronically barking dog. That is why barking drives people crazy. To really appreciate the impact that chronic barking has on your autonomic and endocrine systems, and thus your emotional state, you must also factor in the length of time required for our bodies to return to normal after an acoustic shock like that, which we receive when a nearby dog releases a loud, sudden, percussive burst of barking. If it happens only once, you may return to normal in a matter of seconds. However, with each additional episode of barking, your systems fire up more quickly, and it takes a little longer to return to baseline. If it happens frequently enough, you will still be wound up from the last outburst when the next one hits, with the result that you will be forever tense, and at no point will you ever be able to become truly relaxed in your own home. End quote. Some people's nervous systems are sluggish and not as sensitive, while other people's nervous systems operate like greased lightning and are extremely sensitive. We are all on different parts of this spectrum, Extroverts have more sluggish nervous systems, which is why they thrive in stimulating environments. These people will not have as negative a reaction to the sound of barking. And it will not take them as long to return to baseline once their autonomic nervous systems do kick into a state of arousal. Introverts, on the other hand, have a more sensitive nervous system, which is why they feel overwhelmed by stimulating environments. These people are more likely to be shot into a state of hyper arousal by the sound of barking dogs. The more readily your ANS fires up, the faster your endocrine system will kick in and the longer it will take your body to return to a relaxed state after you are exposed to a flurry of barking. 
Judging someone because of the sensitivity of their nervous system is ignorant and unfair. It is not a person's fault. They cannot control their sensitivity, just like a person cannot control their sensitivity to perfumes or allergens. It's the way their bodies are made, and they cannot do anything about it. That is why dog owners need to have compassion for people who are negatively affected by the sound of barking. While they might not be bothered by the noise, they have to understand that others are. Just like I don't personally have to be allergic to peanuts to understand how severe an allergy to peanuts is and have compassion for peanut allergy sufferers. Because I have empathy, I will not push peanuts on them. But dog owners push their barking dogs on everyone, often without a care in the world. Most people find it difficult to believe that noise can injure people simply because it is not a part of their own experience. They don't feel injured by noise. They say, well, I'm not bothered by barking dogs, so there must be something wrong with you. This is exactly like saying dogs raised by responsible owners won't attack because you think you're a responsible owner and your dog has never attacked anyone. That's anecdotal evidence. Just because something doesn't fall within your own personal experience does not mean it isn't happening to many other people. On this website, it explains that you may be more tense than you realize and noise may be affecting you more than you know. If you've been exposed to the same level of noise for a long time, you may be used to the level of bodily tension created by that level of exposure. In other words, because the sound is always there, affecting you in about the same way, you may have lost sight of the fact that you are tense. It says many people are amazed to see the difference in their own level of tension when they are finally able to settle into a truly quiet environment. It could be that some of the physical and emotional problems you may be experiencing actually are symptoms caused by your level of noise-induced autonomic arousal. Researchers concluded that noise may be harming you even if you are not aware of being bothered by it. I'm providing links in the description to studies done on the effects of intrusive sounds, like that of a barking dog, on our health. Numerous studies have linked noise pollution to high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. Unwanted noise also leads to annoyance, irritability, and psychological stress, which in turn affects one's relationships with others and general quality of life. Noise pollution interferes with your sex life. It delays healing. Hospital patients exposed to noise had longer recovery times than those who were not exposed to noise. Studies have shown unwanted noise delays wound healing. It leads to aggressive behavior and psychiatric symptoms. Surgical patients in a noisy environment require more pain medication than those in a quiet setting. Noise can even increase symptoms of heartburn in patients with gastroesophageal reflux disorder. Exposure to chronic noise, such as barking, leads to problems with cognitive performance. Studies were done with children in schools, and kids that were exposed to noise pollution had poorer reading ability, memory, and performance on national standardized tests than did children who were not exposed to noise at school. This is a big problem for the growing number of families that are choosing to homeschool in neighborhoods that are plagued by the sound of barking dogs. Children are not learning as well as they could be. Chronic noise pollution, of course, leads to sleep disturbance, which in turn leads to many other health problems. What's interesting about sleep is that we are affected by sounds we don't even know we are hearing, like those we hear when we're asleep. Even when you sleep, your ears are working and your brain is processing sound. So although you may not be aware of it, background noises like traffic, aircraft, or the neighbor's music or barking dogs are still being processed and your body is reacting to them. Short-term effects of noise-induced sleep disturbance include impaired mood, anxiety, drowsiness leading to drowsy driving, forgetfulness, distractibility, decreased performance and alertness, memory and cognitive impairment, stressed relationships, occupational injury, and automobile injury. Occupational injury does not only involve people who injure themselves on the job, these sleep-deprived people can injure others. 
Healthcare workers, for example, can make bad decisions or mistakes that can injure or even kill patients. Same with automobile injury. Not only is the sleep-deprived person at risk, the entire public is at risk. Long-term effects of sleep disturbance include high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, obesity, psychiatric problems including depression and other mood disorders, disruption of bed partners, sleep quality, and poor quality of life. Also, the problem of barking dogs frequently leads to violence. Disputes between neighbors often escalate into aggression and assault or worse. There's a section on the BarkingDogs.net website called Violence in the News, where you can read through many stories about enraged neighbors that were pushed over the edge because of the barking, which was intolerable. They are so tortured by the noise that they snap and attack the dogs or their owners. They are pushed over the edge because their bodies are flooded with stress hormones, which affect their thinking and behaviors. Now, all of this is taxing the law enforcement, which could be redirecting their energy towards other things. So these very serious health effects, which are the result of being subjected to chronic barking can no longer be ignored. Millions of people around the globe are being tortured by barking dogs and their health is suffering. This affects us all and puts everyone at risk. We need to share this information widely because it is a serious public health issue. So what is the solution? Approaching neighbors about their barking dogs is something no one wants to do. Most people experience a profound sense of dread when they think about confronting their neighbors about this issue. Nowadays, people are not as close with their neighbors as they used to be. A lot of people don't even know their neighbors, so it's very intimidating to approach them, especially about this. Sometimes the neighbors are unaware of how the barking is affecting those around them and will try to correct the problem once they are made aware of it. But often, the neighbors are reluctant to do anything about the problem. Sometimes they are malicious. Many people have had very negative experiences with reluctant or malicious dog owners in the past and therefore avoid confronting their current neighbors out of fear. So these people suffer in silence. I've known many people in this predicament. They go online to share their experiences and seek help. You can read their stories online. There are millions of them. There are countless websites dedicated to helping people deal with the problem of neighbors barking dogs. The sheer number of these websites speaks to how huge this problem is. People say, just call the authorities, but rarely does this solve the problem. The following is another quote from BarkingDogs.net. The enforcement of noise ordinances is viewed by most law enforcement agencies as a low prestige, low priority assignment to be avoided. Therefore, in those few places where there are viable anti-noise ordinances in place, it is common for officers to mislead citizens who call in asking for help with noise problems by denying the existence of the statute or by misinforming the caller as to what exactly the law says. Or they may mislead you concerning the ground rules of the enforcement of the statute. You have to realize that most anti-barking ordinances were written with the intention of making them unenforceable. And in those rare locations where there is a workable ordinance in place, much more often than not, the authorities find some excuse for not enforcing it. Your town probably has what I call a multiple household law which is one of those ordinances I just mentioned that is all but unenforceable. They attempt to intimidate and dissuade the victims of barking abuse, first by writing an all but unforeseeable ordinance, and then by placing the burden of enforcing that unenforceable law squarely on the shoulders of the victims. The multiple household laws say that before authorities will even consider taking legal action against an irresponsible dog owner, the victim must speak with the neighbor about the barking. Then you must write a detailed letter of complaint and file legal papers against the owner. You must also gather data relevant to his prosecution and you must serve as a witness against him in court. And then, and this is the killer clause, then you must persuade at least two of your neighbors from separate households to do the same for a total of three households. So the victim must spearhead a legal crusade against the perpetrator of the crime and thereby enter into what will almost certainly become an upsetting 
energy-intensive, time-consuming, antagonistic relationship with that person. As you can imagine, the consequences of being forced into that kind of relationship hits the victims hard. As one veteran prosecutor put it, when one neighbor reports a barking problem to law enforcement, it starts a little war. These little wars can get vicious and very scary. Even if you have never had the experience for yourself, you know intuitively that if you spearhead a campaign to bring legal action against a neighboring dog owner, there is going to be trouble. So you want to avoid it if there is any way you possibly can. And that's just how the other victimized neighbors feel as well. People are seldom willing to sign on to a thing like that, no matter how severe the barking problem may be. So that's it. Without another two households ready to join with you in towing the line, you're dead in the water as you drift in a sea of noise." End quote. There's a ton of information about this, which you can find in section three of the Barking Dogs website. Basically, it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to resolve the problem. So now we've recognized a very serious problem. We understand how barking is noise pollution and how it is negatively affecting our health. We also see that anti-barking ordinances were written with the intention of making them unenforceable. So what can be done about this serious and widespread problem? The author of the website goes over different ways we can approach our neighbors, what to say, what not to say. They suggest you upload videos to YouTube of the barking dogs to shame the neighbors. The idea of creating new laws that would make it mandatory for people to be licensed in order to own dogs is proposed. Maybe that's a good first step. But I think the only real solution is to ban dogs from our communities entirely. Dogs are always going to bark, no matter what, and it's a sound we don't need. A common argument is, babies cry and make a lot of noise. Do you want to get rid of them too? No, because babies are human. And as a social animal, I require other humans to survive. I don't require dogs. When I'm old, I would like there to be people running the pharmacies, providing me medication and health care, supplying me with food and shelter and clothing, electricity and plumbing. We need babies for all that. We don't need dogs. The fact that there is one source of noise pollution in our community, babies, does not justify the addition of another unnecessary one, dogs. We should be trying to minimize noise pollution by eliminating unnecessary sources of noise, not adding to the noise problem. Besides, babies aren't left alone in people's yards to scream in distress all day. No one would ever tolerate that. And even if you leave your dog inside your home when you are gone, neighbors can still hear it barking. You cannot leave a baby alone in a house all day while you go to work. Unless you live in an apartment with very thin walls, the neighbor's baby is not likely to keep you up at night like a barking dog will. If the baby's crying does interfere with your sleep, you can be sure they will outgrow it before long. Dogs never outgrow barking. While we can all agree the sound of a crying baby is horrible and also constitutes noise pollution, listening to crying babies is the price we have to pay to maintain our civilization. Dogs are never going to grow up and make meaningful contributions to the advancements of our society like babies will. Dogs are not going to become the inventors, nurses, social workers, garbage collectors, engineers, construction workers, computer programmers, electricians, or scientists that humanity needs in order to survive. But babies are. If babies didn't cry to communicate their needs, the parents would not respond to them and the babies would die. If they die, there's no future for us. So crying babies are necessary for our survival. Barking dogs are not. Some of you will argue that dogs help people and make meaningful contributions to our society as well. But there are only 500,000 service dogs in the USA. There are about 90 million dogs in the USA. So service dogs make up only 0.56% of the total American dog population. Any good dogs might be doing is vastly overshadowed by the bad they do. Most dogs are a menace to society. We need them as much as we need giant rats. They are attacking people in unprovoked attacks every single day. There are about 4.7 million reported dog bites in the USA every year. 800,000, and those are just the reported ones. 
There are undoubtedly millions more. 800,000 of these dog bites are serious enough to require medical attention. That is no small number. 28,000 Americans are undergoing reconstructive surgery every year due to dog attacks. And 20 to 50 people are dying every year in the United States due to dog attacks. We do not need any of this. And these reports, these attacks are more significant than any good a dog might do. Oh, dogs offer people emotional support. That's great. But that is not as significant as having your face ripped off or your limbs ripped off or being killed. Now, we must look at the most significant aspect of our relationship with dogs. Okay, they might be doing some good, but they are doing a lot of bad. And the bad is more significant than the good that they are doing. And besides, even highly trained dogs are attacking children, like the police dog that bit a six-year-old girl in Saskatoon last summer in a completely unprovoked attack. This was a highly trained dog. Like, we should be working harder to replace service dogs with humans or technology, which would be safer. Maybe we can continue to employ service dogs until an alternative is found. But as for the remaining 99.44% of dogs, we would be much better off as a society without them. There's a lot of information to read through on the Barking Dogs site, and most of it is great. I would ask that you please ignore the link to New Animal Control, where the author proposes ridiculous new laws that would, for example, allow dog owners to become licensed to walk their dog off lead. This would never under any circumstances be a good idea because no matter how responsible the owner and no matter how well trained the dog, every dog is unpredictable and a potential danger to the public. The author of the page also believes pit bulls make fine pets if raised by responsible owners. This is a lie. The fact that pit bull type dogs were bred to attack unprovoked in the same way herding dogs were bred to herd and hounds were bred to track scent and those dogs still have those instincts built into them to herd and to track scent. Retrievers have the instinct to retrieve because it's built into them, into their genetics. All of these facts go ignored on this website, which is really too bad. You cannot train or love instincts out of a breed. You cannot deny a dog's genetics. Pit bull type dogs that were raised in loving homes by responsible owners are attacking people in unprovoked attacks every day, resulting in serious and often fatal injury. And this goes ignored by the author of this website, which is truly a shame. Not every dog is capable of killing a person, but pit bulls are. Pit bull type dogs and their mixes are responsible for nearly three quarters of all fatal dog attacks. And this is because they were bred to bite in a specific way. They don't let go, they shake. Other dogs don't bite this way. Anyway, as I said, it's a topic for a future video, but just because a person is wrong on a couple of points does not mean we should disregard everything they say. What the author says about barking is spot on. So I encourage you to check out the website, check out the links in the description, Go online, do your own research. There's a ton of information out there. Inform yourself. Let's raise awareness. Please share this video. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.